Hello, everyone, and welcome to our tactics series. And we have looked already at discovered attack, double attack. Basically, we want to win some material somehow. Okay, well, now let's do it in a very primitive way. We attack something. That something is being defended somehow. And we remove the defender, right? Very, very simple. Caveman strategy. For example, in this position, rook attack bishop. Bishop defended by knight. Need attack knight, right? Simple strategy. If possible, wanna, gonna win game, right? So now we'll stop with that caveman type of speaking and say and think to ourselves. Attacking the bishop, defended. Okay, beautiful. Well, what happened if we attack the knight? Here you go. Winning material, right? I mean, I could have put the rook on e7 without, okay, bishop c6, for example, is intermediate move. That's going to be one of our hugest topics, but it's not really helping. For example, this is a simple way, and so on. But, for example, this move would not be winning. Knight d5, and the bishop cannot be taken because of knight e7 fork, and, okay, we will get to see many, many, many forks. Don't you worry. Okay, same principles. It is not a hugely complicated topic. Okay, some of the puzzles can be more, but if we understand it in a simple way, that's all we need for now. Okay, the bishop is under attack, but it is defended by the knight. Can we attack the knight? Can we eliminate that defense? Well, let's assume we had a rook on d1. We might even consider capturing and capturing on e7. Okay, still, I believe e c4 might have been better, as it is in this position. Attacking the knight, that is defending the bishop, and winning material. That's it. If we don't have immediate capture, let's see if we can remove the defender. That's it. Okay, no immediate capture here for white. But anyone, everyone seeing that the knight is under attack, right? I see it, you should too. It is being defended by the rook, right? Someone doesn't see it, I suggest checking for glasses. Okay, can we attack the rook? Where, the, where can the rook go? We can attack the rook. Can the rook go on e6? No. f6? No. That's it. Bye-bye knight, bye-bye rook. Same concept, same puzzle, we have many more. Okay, check, checks is one of the most common way for removal of the guard. Most common way. It's the most forcing thing, bang. The king checking it has to go, no questions. Being defended by the king, okay, white is a pawn up, but Many, you know, in a quick play, many beginners might just play rook takes rook, but really? What happens if we make effort to remove the defender by playing rook f2? Well, what happens is white is winning the rook. That's it. This is a bit tricky. Okay, there is a pin. We will get and speak about those. The bishop is somewhat pinned. I mean, not, a, not totally because it's being defended by the knight, but there is a pin. Now, we can attack the rook on c1 in two ways. Bishop a3 and bishop h6. And you shall not forget, not for a second, not for half a second. When you play a move, you know, you're not like a soccer player, right? You know, we play the move that we want, you know, running to the corner, take our shirt and you know, screaming that we are winning material. Yippee. Well, it looks cool, actually, but well, I cannot play soccer this way. So we have two moves, but only one of them is good because we are thinking what the opponent will play. So what after bishop a3? Okay, beautiful. We are attacking the rook, almost, almost starting to run and tear our shirt, but not yet. Rook a1. White responds with an attack, attacking the bishop on a3. And he's surviving. After bishop h6, okay, now it is time to start running and 
tear your shirt and go to, you know, to the crowd. All right. Same here. The bishop is under attack. It's only being defended by the rook. And we can attack the rook, but we can attack the rook in two different ways. We can attack the rook with bishop d3, and we can attack the rook with bishop h5. Now, bishop h5, black is going to do exactly the same thing that we have seen white doing in the previous position. Rook e5. Rook e5. When after bishop d3, game is finished. Okay. No something like attacking a piece. I mean, let's say this. Let's say that this was the position. I'm changing it for a second. I will change it tiny bit. Okay, let me, allow me to throw another pawn for white in this position. And okay, I'll be nice. I'll give black another pawn also. Would you agree that playing a move like h5 is winning the game? I think so. I mean, I don't know. The queen is attacking the rook. The knight is defending the rook. Uh, we want to take the knight. Okay, bishop f6, we have e5. Winning. Winning. But okay, our original position was a bit different, right? But we still understand that if there is no knight, there is no rook. Okay, so rook take knight. Winning. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Who is defending the rook on g2? The bishop. Even if it wasn't a check, taking the bishop on c6 would have been powerful enough. Even if it wasn't a check. But it actually is a check. So it doesn't matter, but it's just making it even more forced. Rook take check, removing of the defender, and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, now, the most important diagonal in chess, most important, nothing to discuss. These, those are the most important diagonals in chess. Most of the action is happening on the A2, G8 diagonal. Pretty much doesn't matter which opening you're playing, especially if you're playing E4, E5, but... It is the weak f7 square before castle and after. It's maybe the most important square in chess. f7 and h7. And of course, the opposite for white. So how does white win? You know, first of all, let's start. I, I want to go for a second to another topic. If this was the position, most important pin in chess. Okay, you're going to take it. The amount of games that one seen with this type of pin and pieces hanging... Oh my gosh. So, if this is our position and this is where we start, okay, we can take and take. That's it. We just know this diagonal. Well, the knight is defended how many times? The knight is defended two times. How many times is it under attack? It's under attack two times. All right. Take and take. Simple. Capture, capture. In this situation, capture is the removal of the guard. Not actually moving to attack it, but actual capture. We, we removed one rook that was defending f5. Removal of the guard, right? That's our topic. So who is defending the knight? The bishop. And where does the bishop go after b6? Yeah, that's the thing. The bishop has nowhere to go to keep defending the knight. And that's why the game is finished. And that's exactly why the game is finished. Removal of the guard. What is under attack? What is defending it? Can we attack what is defending it? That's it. Okay, this position I will be nice. I forgot to give black a knight on f6. I did it super quickly. You didn't even see that. Okay. Kind of funny position. But might be a bit complicated in some situations. Okay, I think 
objectively this is winning also but it depends what how but simplest way king is defending the queen kicking the king away from defense one of the most basic ways and things to go that's it now in some positions it's not just the immediate threat but I apologize. It's not just the immediate capture, but a threat. For example, what is happening after knight d5? Well, there's a problem with the queen. Now a question. Why shouldn't white take... Oops, and then play knight d5. Checkmate to the queen. Well, that's not really bad, checkmate to the queen. Yeah, but the problem is... The problem is that we have to think about the opponent move. It's not the only puzzle that's going to have this idea. Black is capturing with a check. Let me put it on a bit, little bit better diagonal. This check. Check, check, check. We have to think what's happening after the opponent plays move. That's why this is White's way of playing. And the same goes here. When I was looking at this position, what do you think was the first move I was thinking? Rook take rook, bishop take rook, knight g5. But then I said, oh man. Check. Check. And white is not going to make a draw in this position. Not even speaking about anything else. So have to be careful, you know. One thing we are discussing the ideas, and they are quite elementary ideas. Peace under attack, peace defended, remove the defender. Okay. But we have to be always careful, especially when high material is involved. Knight g5 finishes. I mean, the game is still a bit on, but I think white should be winning this position. Okay, we have a few more. Well, as we said, sometimes it is just removing off a defender to a piece. But sometimes it is removing a defender to a square. When you look at this position, is rook d8 a checkmate? Yes, it is if, if there is no rook on h8. Okay, well, let's make it that there is no rook on h8. Now you are going to think here. I mean, I, I, I cannot hear your thoughts, but I will take it slower. Well, let me ask a question. Is b6 a checkmate here? If you say that b6 is a checkmate, well, then what is preventing it from being immediate checkmate? Let me put it this way. Oh, the bishop on d4. Okay, we can take care of that, right? There is no price for checkmate. We can take care of that. Done. Now, I want to hear your thoughts. Are you thinking, hey, what would this Ronan dude say here? He's going to say, what is he going to say? He's going to say, hey, rookie 8 is checkmate. If it wasn't for this annoying knight on f6. So he would tell us what would happen if we kill the knight on f6. That's, by the way, what I'm telling you. And after either way the black captures, rook e8 is indeed a checkmate. Guess what? And this Ronin is going to say the same thing again. Hey, what happened after bishop b5? Can the king go anywhere? The answer is no. No, no, no. The king can go nowhere. But the knight can block. And oh man, black looks seems to be like up a piece, so maybe not very exciting position for for white here. So bishop takes b5 is checkmate, but the knight can block. Can we prevent the knight from blocking? Yes. Ta-da! I like this checkmate. It's a very pretty one. Two more. 
simple one, right? Anyone here that studied about checkmate on the back rank? I know I did. But I don't want to play rook c8. My opponent will take it with the knight. So, let me play a5. Let me play a5. Attacking my opponent's knight and asking him, do you want to give me your knight or do you want to allow me to checkmate you? Either way, white is going to win this game. And our last one for today. Again, key squares. The previous position we've seen there, back rank. Okay, now the G7 square. I mean, few Sicilian lines. I mean, this to me looks like Sicilian, obviously. And there's quite few Sicilian lines that have this idea. White plays bishop b5, gives it for the knight, gets some play on the dark squares in the center, g7 a target, so on, so on. Okay, but what to do against g7? It's being defended. Okay. So how can we attack this defend defender? I mean, if we can eliminate it somehow, rook take it, somehow sacrifice, okay, beautiful. But we cannot, but we can attack it. And once this bishop goes... Well, the G7 square is checkmate, and if not, winning material, and it's over. The concept is not that impossible. It's either capturing a piece, attacking a square that we want to be able to get, whatever is defending it, we want to eliminate. This is a cool topic, and I think we will get to do it a little bit higher level on our next video. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from onlinechesslessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without uh, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you uh, in my videos. Thank you.